let's take a look and see how we can create a LifeRay MVC portlet. So I'm going to be following the directions using Developer Studio. So let's go ahead and get started. Clicking File up here at the top left, followed by New to create a new LifeRay module project. The name of this module project is going to be MVC-Portlet-Module. From here, we can go ahead and leave all of the defaults and then click Next. Once we click Next, we're going to give this component a name first. So we'll call it Simple MVC Portlet. Have to put this component in a package. It's going to be lifecom.liferay.training dot portlet module dot portlet. Once you have all of that, go ahead and click finish. What's really nice about the LifeRay MVC portlet is a lot of the internals are already taken care of. So all we need to do from here is take our project and drag and drop it into the server. So let's go ahead and do that. Heading over to modules, we'll find our MVC portlet module, drag and drop into the server, any changes that we make will automatically be deployed as soon as we save. I'll head over to our instance of LifeRay, clicking on the plus button here on the top right, followed by widgets, and then sample. This is where we see our simple MVC portlet. Go ahead and drag and drop it onto the page. You'll get your hello message from the simple MVC portlet. So very good, pretty simple so far. From here, let's go ahead and implement the view.jsp. There we go. So let's go ahead, we'll copy and paste. So copying over, and we'll head over to the view.jsp. So view.jsp is in the resources, followed by meta imp, and then resources. This is where you'll find the view.jsp. Go ahead and highlight everything, replace it, and then save along the way. If you see this error here on the render request, that's okay. We don't need to worry about it just yet. Let's go ahead and again, if you haven't done so, save the file and then we'll head back over to our instance of LifeRay and then refresh the page. From here, we'll see our new JSP or view.jsp taking effect. Now let's head back over to that view.jsp and take a look at a few key lines of code. So if you don't have line numbers enabled, you can right click near this gray area and select show line numbers. So let's start here on my line number 16. So again, the important part I wanna highlight here is this portlet render URL. Whenever we see a render URL like so, we can bind this to something like a button or a link. And once that button or link is clicked and invoked, it will invoke the render URL thus invoking the render phase from the discussion that we had before, right? The render phase will then call the render method within the portlet class. If we head back over and click on the set red, we see that the text here turns red and then clicking on set yellow will set it as yellow. So take a look at the code there. Again, the highlighted part I want to emphasize is this render URL. So when we're clicking on those buttons, the render phase is being invoked, and then the rest of the code is taking precedence. So that's really the emphasis of this portion of code that I wanna highlight. All right, let's head back over to our exercises where we will take another portion of code. So scrolling down, we're now on step number four. I'll go ahead and copy, heading back over to my view.jsp, and then I'll add this at the very end. So below the closing diff tag. So go ahead and paste and then save the file. Again, every time we save, the portlet will redeploy. So the next part I wanna emphasize here is on line number 30. We're using a UI to create a form. Attached to this form is an action URL. So when an action is invoked onto the form, this is going to invoke the action URL. So in this situation, when we click on this button, it will then invoke the action URL, thus calling the action phase or the process action method in this situation. So when I head back over to my instance of LifeRay and refresh, we'll see the 
new form with a drop down. When I click on the send button, we see that nothing happens. And this is because we do not have the action phase implemented for this specific button. So let's go ahead and implement that. So we'll head back over to LifeRay Developer Studio. And we're going to be creating a new class. All right, so expanding this out a little bit so that we can see the packages. So I'll right click the source main Java, head over to new, followed by class. One nifty trick I want to show you guys here really quick. Heading back over to our materials, scroll down. You can take the whole path of the class package and all, and then you can copy that. When you head back over, you can paste it in the name field and you'll see that the package is automatically filled out and the name of the class is automatically filled out as well. So a nifty trick there. From here, I'll go ahead and click finish to create the class. So this is going to be implementing the action phase of our portlet. In LifeRay to implement the action phase, what we do is we create an MVC action command. So this is going to be implemented as a component. So I want to really emphasize uh, the creation of the component. I know we have the code. We'll copy and paste the code in a little bit. So again, when we're creating a component, the first thing we want to identify is what is it exactly that we're trying to do? So we talked about that already. We're trying to implement the action phase for the form that we created. In LifeRay, we have an interface or a base class that helps us out with that. In this case, it's going to be uh, the interface MVC action command. I'll use control shift O to bring in the proper import, right? So identify what we want to do. We find the interface or the base class that's going to help us do that. The next thing we need to do is to declare this as a component. So to do that, we use the at component annotation and using control shift O to bring in the component. After we've declared this as a component, last part here is to set any relevant attributes or properties. So in the LifeRay world, what we like to do is specify this immediate property equal to true. And what that does is it basically says, hey, component, start up as soon as you can. We're not going to wait for anything to start us up. Just go ahead and start if you can. Specify any other properties. So in this case, the component itself has two properties that we really want to emphasize here within the property attribute. The first one is we're going to be quote unquote listening for a specific portlet. So we're going to say for this component, we're going to be listening to the portlet. And in this case, it's going to be ourselves, right? We're going to be listening to the portlet that we have just created. So simple MVC portlet keys, not simple. There we go. So this is standard life ray for every portlet that we create using the MVC template. We're going to have a portlet keys class that has the name of the portlet within it, right? So which portlet are we listening to? And then we're going to be listening for an MVC command name. So what is the command name or the parameter that's being passed in order to invoke the action URL? And so I'm going to head back over to the view.jsp just to double check this. And so here it is in line 28. So here is our action URL. It is abstracted out as this var. I like to say it. it's like a, a variable name, even though it's not a variable. So the var action URL is what's used to invoke the action URL itself here, the portlet action URL. And then the specific parameter that's being passed within the action URL is handle form. And so in essence, what we're saying here in the component is I am listening for this specific parameter, this specific name, or in this case, the specific MVC command name. And so as we saw in the view.jsp, the name that we want to listen for is handle form. So 
this will be handle form like so. Let's talk about that one more time. So back over here in the view.jsp on line number 28, we have this portlet action URL, right? When we want to reference the action URL as a whole, we can declare this var or kind of abstract it out as a var. In this case, the var name is action URL. We take the var and we reference it within the AUI form. So when an action is invoked on the form, it's going to invoke the action URL down the line. When the action URL is invoked, one of the parameters within that request is going to be the name, which is handle form. So in order to handle an action request within the Liferay world, we create a component that implements MVC action command. In the component, we declare two properties specifically. Which portlet are we listening to? What is the name that we're listening for coming from that action URL? Once those two things have been met, the portlet and the action name or the MVC command name, whatever code we put here will then be invoked. So I know we spent a lot of time talking about that, but this is a really important concept uh, because we're gonna be doing it again and again and again. This pattern is going to be done so many times in the life rate development world. So for me, it's very important that you get that idea there. All right, so anyways, I've, I've done a lot of talking. Let's go ahead and add the code from the snippet. We'll go ahead and save. And again, feel free to take a look at the code chunk down here. Again, the part that I wanna emphasize is the creation of the component. And again, these two properties and how it corresponds over in the view.jsp, specifically with this action URL. So let's test this out. So make sure you have saved the file if you haven't done so already. We'll refresh the page here and I'll explain again one more time what's going on. So Alloy UI gives us this form, gives us a drop down. We can select one of the options. So when I clicked on the button, the portlet invoked the action URL, thus invoking the action phase. In Liferay, to handle or to implement the action phase, we create MVC action commands, right? Within the component annotation, we specify which portlet are we listening to and what is the parameter that we're listening for. Again, in the view.jsp, we specify that parameter as the name within the action URL. All right, so very good. That takes care of implementing a Liferay MVC portlet, as well as taking a look at one of our MVC commands. So this wraps it up for this video, and I will see you in the next video.